Hello viewer, welcome back to Artistry. I'm your presenter, Taira Swanyoike. Now, today we continue with our joints. Uh, we have illustrated a number of joints. And today, I want to introduce another very common joint. And as you can see, the two parts in my hands, uh, they will illustrate a joint that is so common in woodwork. Many of you know it. And for these two joints, they will just come together like this and they will form a joint. So this joint is very common, especially in framework, in making frames. If you want to make frames, then we use this joint. So this joint, we call it the mitre, mitre joint. So the mitre joint will have uh, one piece cut at 45 degrees. And we saw in the use of the square, the tri-square. The tri-square can measure both angles, measure and mark for both angles 90 degrees and 45 degrees. So we use this, this tool to measure for the, for the mitre joint. So as you can see, this is exactly 45 degrees. 45 degrees will run along this plane here. So once I place this plane uh, on, the, on, the, on the horizontal or the vertical, uh, plane as I as I hold it that that way, and then I'll make a mark. And then using my bench hook and my and my tenon saw, then I'll cut. The tenon saw is right here. Then I'll cut along that line, and then I'll place it together with this. And then once I cut the two, then they'll make a very good joint at 45 degrees. So 45 plus 45 makes 90 degrees. So the, f the joint is uh, used in making picture frames. It's also used in quite a number of other applications. And once you, you join the four of them, the four corners, uh, we have uh, different ways of clamping them. If the piece is strong and big and can withstand the, the force of the the sash clamps then you can use sash clamps to do that and we can as well use the string we use a piece of string to to to, to put all around the the frame and then we wedge the string everywhere and then we can get it uh well uh, well glued at 90 degrees per corner so we apply glue and then so we clamp it so to form uh 90 degrees uh, for framework and any other type of joinery that may require a, a, a mitre joint. So we also have different ways of reinforcing the mitre joint. Uh, we can introduce a spline. A spline will be kind of a plywood that we cut for this one here. And then we feed the plywood because the essence of any joint is to increase the surface area of interaction between this piece and this other piece so if we have a cut here we so we have a saw calf then we glue we apply glue inside there then we fit in some piece of plywood then that will form a larger surface area of interaction between this piece and this piece so that is one way of uh, strengthening a mitre joint because as it looks right now looks more of a bath joint but the point that we have cut it at 45 degrees then it gives us uh, it gives it that new name now the mitre joint we can as well use the dowels we last time used uh, introduced the dowels and we can as well measure and mark for the dowels this side dowels on the uh, a dowel on the other side then we put it together hold it firmly and then glue it uh, after gluing it with a dowel in the center there, then we have a strong uh, mitre joint. We can as well use a lamello, uh, lamello joint. We put a lamello uh, housing on this one, lamello housing on the other one. Remember the lamello uh, biscuit uh, looks like this. So you recess for it down there, you recess for it down here again, and then it will be swallowed up in the center there. And then it will increase the surface area of gluing 
this this way and this way to form a larger surface area so uh, on the inside it will look something like that now when it is inside there uh, and then you have a strong mitre joint so I want us to as well see the skill of uh, marking accurately uh, if we want our, glue, uh, our joint to get accurate uh, there, there is a skill that we use to mark for that hole for us to achieve a very sharp edged hole then we will mark for our piece uh, we have this mark here we have the other mark here and then we will use the the marking gauge you measure with the marking gauge and then we mark we use the marking gauge to mark and then we mark carefully like that and shade the waist that is how we mark for such a hole assuming we want to make such a, a joint like the mortise and tenon joint and then I'll clamp it in the bench vise holding it firmly or I can as well use the F clamp the F clamp remember we still have it and then I'll use this one as a guiding piece so I'll place it there and then it will serve two purposes it will both clamp the pieces the piece firmly on the bench as well as guide the chisel on where not to go beyond the my chisel will not go beyond that piece and it also holds the piece family on the bench so I'll use the mallet to hit the chisel remember we don't use hammer to hit this plastic chisel so uh, chisel handle so for the handle we use the mallet remember the mallet is a tool we introduced for such purpose as this so we we'll first cut we we'll first cut the fibers I'll cut them again now cut them again I'll cut the fibers and then remove a little bit of it and then that cut the fibers and then from there I can now use the mallet I'll first cut and then I'll use the wider chisel with the flat surface on the edge that I do, I'm not going beyond I cut a little bit along the fibers a little bit along the fibers then I continue now chiseling out So I cut the fibers again. Now I can put some more uh, weight on it. So now I'll start moving. So that's one way of going about it to make sure that I preserve my my edge on this side very smooth and then we also have different uh, ways of going about it but once you protect your edge on one side then you can see how sharp my edge is here so if you don't go take good care of that then there are some people who chisel out and then you want to 
get out the waste uh, by flexing the chisel like that once you pull it this way then it will destroy this edge here and you will not be able to achieve such a such a sharp edge up there so this makes the precision uh, very very accurate so that you can have your joint tight either uh, either a, a mortise and tenon joint or even the the, the, the dovetail joint uh, so we can have the edge very well protected so on the other side i'll still do the same clamp this waist piece there and then hold with my f clamp you can see how easy it is to hold with an f clamp i don't even need assistance i'll just clamp it and then consider the edge carefully and then first cut the fibers first cut the fibers then after cutting can even remove a little bit of it using the chisel and then I'll place the chisel right abut abutting the waste piece and then I hit a bit to start with I hit just a little bit and then on the other side a little bit a little bit then continue also uh, on this on the side along the grains this one the first one i do it lightly to avoid splitting it and then i continue So here we don't just hit, we employ a little bit of filling, filling on the tool. You feel the, the weight you are putting on the tool so that you can achieve a good edge once you cut. So if I just remove the waste now in the middle there, then my hole has just started and it is sharp. It is sharp in the way I'm cutting. So I'll continue. Now I'll be able to hit harder once I get uh, a bit down and then hold the mallet near the end so that the impact will be well felt. Then I'll just continue. I'll continue now without fear of destroying the edges. So I'll just continue right away. So that was just an illustration of how we go about chiseling that we get a good edge on our joint. So now we can see a bit of the edges. So we have started it well. Now if I want to continue, I'll continue and mark with the with the with the tri square, transfer the same marks on this other side, then I can start on the other side so that I don't destroy the edge or I protect my piece. On the bottom then i continue up to the bottom but the best way is to transfer the marks and then chisel also from the other side so that was the illustration of making that hole we call it the the mortise and the tenon is the other part that has a protrusion so uh, we'll take a short break and then we will be back and continue with some other concepts on joints. So stay tuned.